nice fresh cut ready to do a video so for today's video I'm gonna be trying something a little different than what we normally do we're gonna go over the best practices for coding that I use and I got some special tools to help me out with this video so let's get started So if anybody remembers, when I first started making videos, I really liked to draw some things out to help explain topics. But since I got a Mac, I couldn't really do that. But now, here we are, and we could draw again. So expect to see this being used a lot more in videos. So this video is called Coding Best Practices. We're mostly going to cover object-oriented programming topics, but there's also going to be topics for general coding overall. For example, these last two. So these first couple of topics can be used for any object-oriented programming language. And we're going to use Dart and Flutter as our example since that's what I've been working with mostly. So here are the five topics I'm going to cover. We're going to go over organization, how to keep your stuff organized. Testing, which is a very important overlooked topic. Some general tips for object-oriented programming with Dart specifically. Then some quality of life tips. Then some mental and physical health tips by my friend Rolf Rosenberg and his channels in the description. I think that's the part that's overlooked by most people that code and, and it's important to keep your mental and physical health in check as a coder. So let's get started. So first things first, to keep your code organized, you must have a good folder structure. I've made videos about folder structure in Dart and Flutter that I personally like to use, but you can use any folder structure, just make sure you're staying organized. Then number two for organization, you make sure you separate your code as much as you can for low coupling. Now, if you don't know what low coupling is, it, low coupling refers to a relationship in which one module interacts with another module through a simple and stable interface and does not need to be concerned with other modules internal implementations. This basically means separate your code as much as you can and make sure the interaction between them is as simple as can be. So low coupling refers to architecture. And architecture is a massive topic that people take decades to learn. So I don't think I can cover this in one video, but I could show you there's a couple architecture principles. First one's called SOLID. It stands for Single Responsibility, Open Close Principle, Liskov Substitution Principle, Interface Segregation, Dependency Inversion. So this one, as well as GRASP, are the two main object-oriented principle lists. Now GRASP contains nine patterns that they call and you'll see low coupling is one of them. I recommend you do your own research on GRASP and SOLID and architecture patterns that you can use. So like I said they are SOLID and GRASP and they're known as like the top two main architecture principle lists. Anyway architecture and architecture principles is a huge topic and I'm probably not the best expert on it anyways. So the next part is testing. And the biggest best practice for testing is to actually do some testing. I know you guys have seen some of my videos. I'm sometimes lazy with testing, but I've been trying to get better over time. And one great practice for testing is to use this thing called TDD. So TDD is test driven development. And what that means, basically, you write your tests before you actually write the code for your software. And you might be thinking, why does that make sense? How does that work? Well, all the tests will fail at the beginning, which is normal, but writing your tests first means you're writing code that passes your tests. And if you watch my unit testing video, you remember I said testing drives good architecture. So by writing to make your tests work means you're writing with good architecture. Also, this means your code is always tested and, and the actual time it takes you to write code should be a lot faster because you can just check right away if your test passes. You know, you, you implemented it right. If your test fails, you implemented it wrong. So now some rapid fire tips. So Dart and other languages let you just use a basic phrase like this and it determines the type for you. I strongly recommend not to use that because let's say you have var list. You have no idea what type this list is. So let's say we want this list to be a type of strings. If you do list of integers, it will work just fine. And then you want, will want to pass this list to a different function, expecting that it will be a list of strings, but actually it's a list of integers and it's going to make your debugging life a lot harder. 
Second point is do not use absolute positioning. What I mean by absolute positioning, let's say you have your app like this and you want to put a dot somewhere, don't tell it position 20 pixels and 20 pixels. This will get you in a lot of trouble when it comes to reactive programming and just making your UI good overall. Next point is do, do not overcomplicate things. Try to keep every function as simple as you can because when you come back to it, it'll be a lot easier to read and to maintain overall. And it kind of goes with this next point as well. Don't use outside libraries if you don't need to. So in Flutter, having a bunch of packages is almost normal. But I would recommend to try to use them minimally because you never know how the package will get updated. If there's breaking changes, then you're going to have to update your whole app. And keeping everything within your own control will make it easier to maintain as well. And you know that you can trust the code in there. Now, this doesn't mean you shouldn't use packages at the beginning. A good approach, in my opinion, is to use all the packages you need for the initial product. And then you can update the app to remove those packages with your own implementation and thus remove the dependencies on outside sources. The next point is to use some sort of static analysis tool. In Dart, we have Dart Analyzer. This basically goes through your code and tells you where you can improve. And the last point is on Flutter.io, there's a bunch of rendering best practices. So here, you can increase your performance and make your Flutter app better. And I'm sure other programming languages have things like this as well. So I would recommend to read through all of these to make sure your app performance is top notch. So these last couple of points are called quality of life. And this will basically help you keep your code maintainable. Make sure you document what you're doing, whether that means keeping like a wiki and GitHub wikis or taking notes on what you've done and why you did it. It will definitely help you in the future. Make sure you pick good variable names so that you can read the code. With good variable names, your code becomes a lot more readable. When you come back to it in the future, you'll know exactly what you were trying to do. And then lastly, if there's something more complex, this kind of goes along with the document, make sure you add some comments. I know most of my code doesn't really have any comments, but if you're working on a production app, it's definitely a great idea and you'll be thanking yourself later. And I know this video is called Coding Best Practices, but I think when it comes to coding, taking care of your body and your mind is just as important as all these other best practices. In order to be a great programmer, you need your brain functioning at full capacity. And my good friend Raf specializes in health and fitness as a coder, so I thought I would let him take care of that. First of all, thank you very much Tadas for having me here. I appreciate it, man. For everyone who doesn't know me yet, I'm glad you are here. I'm nice to meet you. And today we're gonna talk a little bit shortly about uh, mental health and physical health as a developer because as a developer we have quite the stressful life right every day fighting bugs and whatnot dealing with annoying managers deadlines it's just a heavy load it's a heavy load i see a lot of developers in the community who do not care about this at all i'm not saying that everyone is uh, like this because i also see a very big part who was very aware about being in shape uh, being good mental shape but there is still uh, among developers there's still a big uh, chunk who re really doesn't care about it and and it is a shame because if you're looking at longevity if you want to achieve longevity in our field it is key that you keep that in check and especially your health your physical being we are staying seated all day long so it isn't the best for for us at all so it is very important that outside of work you take care of yourself i'm gonna just go over five quick tips on what to do to uh, stay in shape both physically and mentally first one being stay active doesn't matter what you do go for a walk go for a run cycling whatever just stay active stay active second one being get enough sleep it's not cool when you don't sleep enough so get that seven hours in or even eight hours that's even more preferred so get enough sleep it's so important third one being eat good eat healthy skip the trash i don't say skip it all like i said try to eat clean 90 percent of the time because you know what they say i'm not being corny here you are what you eat and it is so okay the fourth one being make sure you love what you do if you do not like what you do, then there's no future for you there. 
you're gonna get burned out at some point or worse get depressed or something so always make sure you love what you do if not try to find something that you love to do all right the fifth one being stop comparing yourself with others very important so that was the end of this and Tadas, thank you very much for having me man i enjoyed it and yeah hopefully we can do some more collabs in the future and yeah i hope to see you soon then as well ciao so okay that's it these are my coding best practices let me know if in the comments if you have any other best practices that you use for flutter or for coding overall or for your health and fitness as a coder and now with that last point i'm going to go to the gym to get my health and fitness in check so like subscribe and share if you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.